Hi, my name is David Lightbound, and this podcast is in regards to using Dynamics as a modeling tool. Now, most artists are familiar with using Dynamics to generate cloth. For example, here we're creating a uh, cloth system, um, and it's going to allow us uh, to easily put some cloth onto these objects, and then we can freeze that mesh and then uh, and use it as geometry. Um, however, there are other ways to create uh, create geometry um, by using uh, Dynamics. One of them is by using particles. So here we have this scene where we're creating uh, bullet holes on a wall by shooting particles out of this cannon. So I'm going to delete these bullet holes, and uh, we're going to play that back. And you can see as the particles hit the wall, they create bullet holes. So here we're using dynamics to be able to quickly and easily create geometry across a surface. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So I'll open up this uh, fresh scene here that has our cannon, our object, and finally our bullet hole object that we're going to duplicate and place along the wall where our particles impact the wall. Um, so the bullet hole object is called hole, and we also have a group called holes. And whenever we generate one of these bullet holes, we're going to parent that bullet hole under the, the group here to keep our scene organized. So the first step that we're going to do is we're going to go into the Dynamics module. So here we're going to go and select Dynamics, and in Particles we're going to select, select Create Emitter. That's going to create an emitter in the scene. So if we go into the top view and the side view and position our emitter there right in front of the tip of the cannon, and we're also going to parent that emitter to our cannon. So we're going to uh, put it underneath the cannon here, and that means that wherever we rotate the cannon, the emitter is going to be sticking out of the front. So um, if we uh, just do one more thing here to make it a little bit easier for you to see the video at home, I'm going to go into the Particle Shape tab here, and in the Render Attributes, in the Points, I'm going to click create, uh, Current Render Type, and I'm going to set the point size to 8, just so it's going to be a little bit easier for you to see on the video. So you can see uh, right away that there's a, there's a couple problems. We've got this, uh, this cloud going off of particles in all directions. It's not shooting in one direction. There's too many of them. So let's go ahead and modify some of their attributes. So in the Emitter tab up here, first thing I'm going to do is set this from uh, the emitter type from Omni to Directional. I'm going to set the particle rate to 1. I'm going to scroll down to the spread and put that to 0.1. And I'm going to set the speed to 5. And what that's going to do is give us a nice small stream of particles that are going to shoot off in one direction and are going to have a little bit of spread. And of course we can also see that they're in the, they're shooting in the wrong direction, not straight out of the tip of the cannon. So very easy to fix. I'm going to go to the Rotate tool and I'm going to rotate them 90 degrees so that the Z is pointing straight out. And then if I go back and press play, you can see that they're shooting straight out of the wall. So this is all well and good, but we can see right away our first problem is that these particles are going right through the wall. So what we're going to do is try to uh, create a, an interaction between the particles and the wall, uh, create a collision, basically. So let me, let me select this uh, particles, a uh, set of particles, and, and then shift-click on the wall. And in the particles menu here, there's a menu item called Make Collide. What that's going to do is make the particles uh, aware of the wall so that they bounce off them. So from the side view, I'm just going to move the cannon down a little bit here and rotate it up so it's going to bounce off uh, diagonally. Go back and then press play. You can see as soon as the particle hit the wall, it bounces straight off. So now we have an interaction between the wall and the particles. And the next thing we want to do is to be able to um, figure out when those particles hit that wall. So we want to know when they hit the wall so that we can create a bullet hole at that point. And to do that, we can, we can uh, create what's called a, a particle collision event. So I'm going to select my particles and go down into the particles menu and select particle collision event editor. And uh, you can see I have particle 1 selected here. In the event name, you can type any name really that you want, but I'm going to type in the name event here, and I'm going to click create event. And that means that now the particles have an event on them that determines when they're going to collide with the wall. Now that event is going to be either a number 0 or 1. 0 means they haven't hit the wall, and 1 means they have. So to be able to see that in action, uh, what I'm going to do is open up uh, the attribute editor for our, um, for our particles. I'm going to select particle shape. And instead of points here that we had, we selected before, I'm going to select numeric. And what numeric does is it lets us see, uh, instead of points, it lets us see numbers uh, for those particles in the scene. Now right now, by default, it's going to give us the order of the particles. But instead, if I click on current render type here, and instead of particle ID, uh, I type the word event and press enter, you can see that it changes, uh, uh, changes the numbers between 0 and 1. So if I go back and I press play, or I slide along the, uh, the timeline, you can see that the particles that have not yet hit the wall down here have 0, and the ones that have hit the wall have 1. So I'll start that over here. You can see they all have 0, 0, 0, 0. As soon as they hit the wall, it changes to 1. 
So now we know that on a per particle basis, when the event is 1, it has already hit the wall. So the next step that we want to do is we essentially want those particles to die as soon as they hit the wall so that we can duplicate a bullet hole at that exact position where they hit the wall. So the first step is to be able to go uh, into the particle shape here and we're going to go up to the section here that says lifespan mode and instead of live forever, the particles by default now uh, live as, as, as long as they possibly can, we're going to switch down here to lifespan PP only and the PP stands for per particle. So they're going to have a lifespan on a per particle basis. So that means that we can switch, we can turn off or kill a particle on a, on a per particle basis. And the next step is we're actually going to write an expression so that when those particles hit the wall they're going to die. It's going to be a very simple expression. 